Uh, hi, my name is Jason Barrett and I am a writer, producer, director um, and I'm also the creator of a graphic novel series called Heru. Um, I also do black studies teaching and um, yeah, just a all-round renaissance guy. <laughs> I feel that the, the idea or the concept of Heru, um, I was actually having a conversation with a friend of mine and um, we were just sort of discussing ideas. We're both comic collectors. We've always been big fans of the comic book genre. And just in that conversation, he's also a filmmaker and a director. And in that conversation, we were talking about black superheroes and, and the, the need for it. And um, conceptually, we started discussing things. He actually had made a similar, um, he has a similar concept of a film called Enough, which was um, also about a, a slave that's got superpowers. Um, I'm very much into Egyptology. And so the kind of concept of Heru grew out of that. Um, and so, yeah, um, you know, it took a little while for me to start putting pen to paper and to actually get it written down. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of where it came from. The importance of black heroes cannot be understated. Um, it's a really important thing that our imagery and um, how our imagery is projected, especially to our young people, um, is, is very, very important. When I grew up reading a lot of the comic books and seeing the cartoons, um, I don't know if you remember a comic book series called Asterix. Um, you know, the, the, the way that the black people in Asterix were depicted was always in a very derogatory sense. Also, Tintin, you know, really big lips. They were always carrying white people around on shields. Um, you know, the guy had leopard skin boxer shorts on and a bone for his nose. And I just remember seeing those things and, 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 and remembering the impact that it, sort of the negative impact that it had on me. And then the flip side to that was you'd see things like Superman and Captain America and these sort of all American European heroes. And, and the black heroes were never as prominent, never had as good powers. And so I know that as a child, that had an impact of me not seeing um, black superheroes in my image that looked like me. And so I think it's really, really important that we have um, diversity and that we have black representation. Um, Brown versus Board of Education, the experiment with the dolls by, um, I think it was Clark, did an experiment and 90% uh, of the young black children when asked, do they want a black doll or a white doll, all chose the white doll. And the things that they said about the black doll was it was ugly or it was a lot of negative things. Um, and so where does that come from? Well, that comes from the things that we play with. That comes from the cartoons that we watch. That comes from the comic books that we read. And so I think it's very, very important to have positive black imagery in comics, in cartoons, um, on television, and right the way across the spectrum, um, action figures, dolls, very, very important to have. The Black Panther was a major, major um, plus in my opinion. I know people had mixed opinions about it in the black community. Um, the fact that it was a Walt Disney production, the fact that it was um, owned, uh, I suppose the heroes were created by, by white people. And I think people had issues with that. For me, um, I didn't have a problem with that. For me, I looked at what the Black Panther did. I looked at what it did box office wise. I look at the representation of beautiful black women um, that were on screen, the, the amazing um, feeling that it gave my children. You know, we, went, we put on a screening of the Black Panther and we turned the cinema into Wakanda. And um, it was just an amazing thing. And for the first time, when I looked at my son, he was dressed as Black Panther and my daughter, she was dressed as one of the Dora. And um, for the first time, I saw what white children have as standard when they dress up as Harry Potter and when they do all the cosplay of all of the other um, uh, Star Wars characters and, and, and so on and so forth. And it just for the very first time, I saw my children having heroes that were in their image and in their likeness. And I thought it was just an amazingly important thing. So I think the Black Panther, the importance of it cannot be understated. Um, where I am. And of course, yes, we could have done more. The money could have gone in the black community. I don't know, you know, that's not going to happen. But um, with regards to the imagery, and, and, and that's what I'm dealing with, with regards to the imagery and the, and the impact of having a black superhero 
um, a predominantly black cast, um, amazing black female characters, um, just looking beautiful and heroic. Um, I just, I, I, I think it was, it was brilliant. I think it was amazing. I think it was an excellent job done by Ryan Coogler and his team. I really don't have a problem with the use of the word black. I, there's, there are other words that I have a problem with um, that are used to refer to black people. Um, for me, one of the most ancient words for us um, was black. When you look at Akiba land, um, which was one of the most ancient names for Africa, it was the black land. And, and black was always a symbol of deity in ancient Kemet and was an association to our relationship with the sun, with Ra. And so for me, there's, there's no issue. I think that Europeans have demonized the word black and so it's had a knock-on effect for black people sort of thinking that there's an issue with that word. Um, but for me, there's, there, there's absolutely no problem with using the word black. Um, also, I, I think that um, we kind of reclaimed it again in the whole black power movement um, from 1965 to 1975. So again, from a political standpoint, black was a very important thing. Um, I'm black and I'm proud, you know, James Brown. That was, that was uh, you know, iconic and, and, and something that was quite necessary at the time. So this idea of, of black being bad or, or, or associated with something bad is a, is a very European concept and that has been projected onto people of African and Caribbean descent and made them feel like there's something wrong with the phrase black, black. But for me, the use of the word black with regards to our people, I have absolutely no problem with it. It's a symbol of deity, a uh, symbol of the blackness of the soil, the black land, um, the land of the blacks. This, this, this has always been an ancient reference to us and um, refers to our deity and our relationship with the sun. <laughs> Being black British, for me, um, sometimes it can be difficult, actually, and sometimes it can be a difficult concept to kind of grasp fully, um, being sort of, you know, I look at British as my citizenship, so I look at myself as someone of African descent um, from uh, an ethnic, or, you know, my ethnicity, um, but my citizenship is very British, um, and I have... African Caribbean culture, I also have British culture. And so it's something that I recognise the dichotomy within my own self, um, being black and being British. And, and I think it's something to be proud of. I think that we have created a black British culture. Um, I, I feel like now more than ever that we're in the midst of a black British renaissance um, where there's so much going on in the form of creativity um, from the music that, you know, kings like Giggs is putting out to uh, you know, things like uh, uh, the, the writing that people like um, Akala's doing. Um, he's, he's also put out a graphic novel, um, the graphic novel that I've done. Um, their filmmakers, Leon Oldstrong's putting out some amazing documentary stuff. Um, so I feel like that there is um, a move at the moment and, and that's all I can call it. You know, there's dance, costume making, there's just so much happening in Black Britain at the moment. And it's really, um, it's a really exciting time to be black and to be British. And so, you know, I, I know after Brexit, there was a lot of um, racism. There was a lot of xenophobia and, and all of that. But the truth of the matter is we're here. You know, we're, we're, we're here. We ain't going anywhere. You know, and the, the truth of the matter is, you know, well, what was happening right now? You know, when you think about black Britain right now, when you think about Britain right now, when you think about London right now, the, you know, these are, you're thinking about Idris Elba, you know, you're thinking about gigs, you're thinking about Skepta, you know, you don't want to see these boring white guys like Boris Johnson, <laughs> we don't want to see these guys, you know, we're not thinking about these guys, if we, if we are thinking about the white guys, we're thinking about guys like Professor Green, you know, that are part of the culture, Adam Deacon, a part of the culture, you know, so these are the guys that we're looking at now. Um, great actors like uh, Amela Mean, John Boyega, I mean, I could go on and on, Letitia, right? So much is happening right now. I think that, you know, we are in the midst, and I suppose maybe I'm the first to coin the phrase, but we are definitely in the midst of a uh, black British renaissance. So it's a great time to be black and British. I feel like it's, um, when you look at the renaissance, of uh, the sort of 16 to 1800s, uh, the English Renaissance, um, 
for the European Renaissance. It was the rebirth, and it was the rebirth of culture. It was the rebirth of art. It was also about discovery, um, and it was about ex new expressions of culture. You had the likes of Shakespeare come out of the Renaissance, and you know so many others. Um, uh, Sir Francis Drake went around the world, and and there was just lots going on. Um, and I feel like then you in the 1920s, I think you had the Harlem Renaissance. And I feel like Britain now is having its version of that, you know, in our musical expressions, in our expressions of dance and, and, and our expression of a, of a culture that's very much affected by our African and Caribbean ancestry. But also it's got this melting pot of just amazingness <laughs> that's going on right now. And like I mentioned names before, but, you know, man, man like gigs. You know, like, you know, it's worldwide now, the influence of that. Actors like Amel um and, and Idris Elba. And, you know, Idris has just had his directorial debut. I saw his film last night, Yardi, amazing. Um, and I think it's this kind of moving forward. I mentioned the Carla before with his writing and his hip hop Shakespeare company. So there's this melting together of our Britishness. Um, mixed with our African and Caribbean ancestry and what we're getting out of it is this kind of amazing cultural explosion, a veritable smorgasbord of, 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 of dance and of expression and, 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 I, and I think it's just it's, it's absolutely brilliant and it's a very, very exciting time um, in Britain right now, London in particular. Um, but, but it is going across Leeds, Manchester, everyone is a part of this Birmingham um, that are putting into this and having this kind of um, amazing cultural explosion at the moment. And it is being driven very much by um, being black, being British, it's very much being driven by the culture. And um, yeah, I think, it, I think it's an exciting time. <laughs> Well, uh, right now we're concentrating on the graphic novel. Um, we're concentrating on the graphic novel series. It's a five-part book series, Heru. Um, book one, The First Hero, is out now. So check the links at the end. Um, buy yourself a copy. Support the cause. You know, it's an independent project. Um, and it's about the, uh, like I said, about black imagery, about the importance of having black heroes. And we'll be touring it. Um, so we're going to have some, some, some fun times just taking that around, introducing this character to people. Um, and we're trying to develop it into, um, into either a movie or a TV series or both. You know, why not? Why, why limit ourselves? So we're looking at the development of that. Um, I've got a film that we'll be shooting um, later on in the summer called The Evangelist. So we're looking forward to that too. So yeah, exciting times. Um, I still got book two, three, four, and five. I've got the outline of them, but it's about now getting them illustrated and getting them out. So yeah, but I can't do it um, by myself. I need your support, I need your help. And so, and this is, even though it's a black superhero, this is for everyone, you know, it's for everyone. It's entertainment, um, but yeah, primarily it's definitely for the culture. And so I hope that we'll get behind it I hope that you'll tell a friend to tell a friend and all of that. And um, hopefully, um, you know, it can be um, as good as it can be and its reach can be far and wide. JBN Comics presents Hair Room. When an asteroid falls from outer space to Earth, a runaway slave finds the asteroid and is endowed with superhuman powers. He sets about on a mission to free his people and change the world. Unknown to him, the very asteroid that gave him his powers carries a dark secret that could destroy the world. Heru, the first hero.